Wow. Okay. So before I get started, I just want to thank the creators of the Acolyte for getting me out of my creative slump and giving me a reason to actually make content again because I've got a lot to say. Now, I want to clarify that if you're a fan of the series, I think that's great. If you watch this and you are genuinely entertained and you love the show, that's awesome. I'm not here to convince anybody that it's bad. So nothing against fans or even the creators of the show. I just don't share the same opinion. Now, if you're genuinely going to get upset that I talk badly about the show, uh, don't watch because this video is not for you. Now, with that out of the way, I am going to spoil it but I really doubt that anybody's gonna care. So let's go ahead and just dive right on into this dumpster fire. Guaranteed, if you've been following the Acolyte at all, you've already heard everything there is to say about it. Um, from the terrible writing to the completely stale, wishy-washy characters to the absolutely horrendous betrayal of George Lucas's original saga. This show single-handedly made me want to go back and re-watch the sequel trilogy. Even that was better than this, and they didn't even know who their main character was going to be. I'll be honest, watching The Acolyte just kind of feels like it was a high schooler's fan fiction. Like, I can see a teenager being really proud of their enemies to lovers, Star Wars, story fan fiction that they uploaded to tumblr now i want to be clear i think it's obvious that the creators at least had some sort of knowledge of the lore with the inclusion of like cortosis and lightsaber whips even the bleeding of a kyber crystal which in my opinion that was probably one of the only cool scenes in the entire show now i won't get ahead of myself i, I do think that there were some genuinely nice moments in the show. The fighting was very fluid, which I thought was great, but I, I will say I thought that the kung fu aspect of it got old really quickly, especially towards the end there where they started to use like Zack Snyder slow motion and all that. I, I wasn't really feeling that, but I do think that the fight scenes were some of the strongest scenes in the entire show, but that's not really not saying much, but it feels like to me, butchering the Jedi Order and what they stand for and what how they operate was definitely a choice. Like, obviously, it's one thing to show the Jedi in a different light and to kind of question their methods and definitely challenge their beliefs. But it's another thing to make your Jedi just completely stupid. Now, shedding the light on some of the downsides of the Jedi and really questioning their methods has already been done. Like, pretty much everything in this show has already been done. Really, they're just rehashing old ideas and making them worse. Like, it really blows my mind because you would think that making a badass Star Wars story that takes place before the prequels with the Jedi in their prime, that, that's like a free W right there. But somehow, they still manage to fall on their face. Like, the Jedi are supposed to be these very wise peacekeepers of the galaxy, kind of like samurai. And the very first Jedi we see not only ignores a direct threat from somebody threatening to kill them, instead they decided to sit there and watch as this person proceeds to beat the hell out of everybody in this bar and not do anything about it until they've already kicked everyone's ass. And then, and not to mention that they're using the force when doing this, and it just kind of feels like this Jedi can't be bothered to step in it's like they're just sitting there kind of waiting being like okay i'm not allowed to move until everybody is on the ground hey there editor me here i was actually re-watching this clip and i noticed something kind of funny this jedi is fighting may and she reports to the council or you know she reports in her little comms thing saying that she has encountered an unidentified force user but she knows what osha looks like Osha has trained at the Jedi Temple. She took Osha with her. You know, we learn this later on, but at this moment, she knows what Osha looks like. So wouldn't she just assume that this is Osha if she you know, thinks that the other person's dead? But after a little bit of fighting, then she realizes that this is... <laughs> This doesn't make any sense. I do kind of like the idea of challenging a Jedi and their beliefs and attacking without a weapon because it does kind of beg the question of like how far do you push a Jedi before they are allowed to draw a weapon on you. And so in that sense, the hand-to-hand -hand combat was kind of cool and it was refreshing. And you, you have Carrie Ann Moss from The Matrix, so of course you want to do that. But I feel like the moment somebody starts using the Force to 
kick the crap out of people, that probably warrants you to use all your tools at your disposal. But all that gets thrown out of the window when Mei pulls out a couple of throwing knives. And honestly, she's really lucky that this stab killed her because let's be real, there, there's like a 50-50 chance that she survived that, especially with Star Wars nowadays. Now imagine she lived how embarrassing it would be to have to explain getting bested by an amateur force user with a couple of knives. It's honestly hard to imagine a scenario where a Jedi Master loses this fight, but whatever. I'm, the plot needs her to, so just, just roll with it. Honestly, that's kind of like my biggest gripe is that the whole series feels like all these characters are forced to do things and go places just because the plot simply writes that they go there, but there's almost zero logic or reason behind it. The, the scene that immediately comes to my mind is when Osha and Mei pull a parent swap and they swap masters and Mei is pretending to be Osha with Master Soul. And at this point, he has no idea what happened to the Sith, no idea what happened to the real Osha. As far as he knows, they're back on the planet. And after he figures out that May is actually May, he just up and decides to leave. Like he just dips. Like there's no reason why. He just absolutely bounces for no apparent reason, having zero knowledge of anything else going on in the plot. But he just goes here because he can't be here when the Jedi get here or else the rest of the story doesn't work. And at no point do you get the sense that the Jedi are actually trying to protect anybody or do any of their Jedi duties for that matter. Like there's a number of Jedi being murdered by a dark side user and it seems like nobody on the Jedi Council can sense this or feel a sort of disturbance in the force or know that any of this is going on for the, that matter. You would think this would be a bigger deal. Like you would think that Master Yoda would at least have some sort of idea that this is going on. But nah, Green Chick just lies straight to his face and blames everything on Master Soul. Now I don't have the level of brain rot required to make sense of why she even lied in the first place. To be honest, it kind of just seems like she doesn't want to deal with the paperwork. <laughs> like for her, it's easier explaining Soul going rogue and killing all these Jedi and himself rather than going through the leaps in logic of explaining what actually happened. Like not to mention, could she even get away with lying? Is there not an ability of the Jedi to tell when somebody is lying to them? Not that it really matters anyway, because even her bullshit story has gaps in it. Like the fact that Soul has an alibi. The first Jedi is killed while he is at the Jedi Temple training younglings. Like obviously he's not there, but he still gets pinned for the murders of all the other Jedi Masters. And not even that, people already know that Osha exists. She was at the Jedi Temple training at one point. But now you have Mei, who is presumed dead, who supposedly killed her entire tribe and burned down their temple, and now she just miraculously has memory loss. Like, that doesn't make sense in itself. Honestly, it would have just made more sense to blame everything on Osha. Except none of this even really makes sense to begin with. Like, why are the Jedi like this? Jedi are supposed to be wise and act without personal motivation or without emotion. Yet everyone is making decisions based on their emotions and these are supposed to be peak Jedi. Like nothing in this show really matters in the end because none of the characters go on any sort of meaningful character arc that has any sort of impact on the bigger galaxy in the long run. Like if you think about it, this whole thing gets covered up and it's kind of just like a filler arc in Naruto. You don't need to watch this because it really does not matter. And what I mean by that is like, think back to Ahsoka, whether you like the show or not, at least that show does something with the universe. It expands it. It uses the fact that there is a different galaxy and, and adds on to the story without deliberately breaking any of the already predetermined canon. This show apparently just did all of this as setup so that they could just introduce Darth Plagueis for like a second behind a rock. And now I guess they get to claim that this is the reason that Darth Plagueis decided to pursue creating life or maybe even this is their sort of tease that Darth Plagueis is behind all of this to begin with. I, I couldn't tell you. 
Either way, it just feels really stupid. It doesn't add to the canon. All it does is sort of poke holes in the plot of The Phantom Menace. And it, it changes pre-established lore for no reason. And it it's a bummer. It sucks because I wanted to like The Acolyte. I was honestly pretty excited. Like... I thought the Acolyte was going to tell an original story from the perspective of maybe like a Jedi outcast or, you know, somebody dabbling in the dark side during the peak era of the Jedi. And we were going to see some epic fights and maybe we were going to get an interesting story that really does challenge the Jedi and their morality, their practices, and do so in a very like clever and well thought out genuine way that doesn't break any sort of canon and is actually exciting for the fans to watch like it would have just been so cool to get something that unites the fans again something really good and i spoke about this before but people often say that they want a star wars show like game of thrones and not you know star wars with the same sort of plot as the game of thrones they want star wars that is written as well as game of thrones maybe not so much the last season but even the last season of game of thrones was probably better than the acolyte but it's kind of ironic because while this show is airing we are also getting house of the dragon at the same time and you really get to see exactly what i mean here that show is thriving. It is going so strong. Like, once again, kudos to George R.R. R. Martin because dude cooks. He goes insane. You get really intriguing storylines. You get really intriguing character arcs. You get really complex characters. You get a really well thought out world. And I just said really a lot. <laughs> but that's the point is this world has a lot of that already. You just have to use it. You have to have writers that know what they're doing. You have to have people fact-checking you and making sure that you're not breaking canon. You're not ruining what has already been pre-established for no reason. And I genuinely thought that that was going to be the role that Dave Filoni was going to do. Like, what was he doing? Was he even a part of the creation of this show whatsoever? I don't think his name was in the credits, so I doubt it. I think this was probably made before... He was in the current position that he's in but like even then this really is not a good look because those who champion dave filoni to kind of lead star wars in the right direction are trusting his knowledge of the series are trusting because he trained with george lucas he was taught everything he knows from george lucas and the only other person that knows star wars as well as dave filoni would arguably say, would arguably be sam whitwer and it's just such a head scratcher as to why this wasn't pre-screened by Dave Filoni or why Lucasfilm doesn't even get Sam Witwer and have him be like an executive producer. Like, do they just not want that? What really sucks is that a lot of the negative responses are going to just be chalked up to the sexism, racism, and misogyny that you see online and just completely ignore the fact that the writing is the real problem here. Everything that I mentioned is a big problem. Like, don't get me wrong, in every fandom that exists and that is a big problem and theoretically, hopefully one day we can get past that and that will be completely gone in a perfect world. But that isn't the sole reason for the failure of the Acolyte, pun intended. I've said it before, there are fans that literally live and breathe this universe. They love this with every fiber of their being and all they want is good Star Wars content. They want something that makes them feel good, something that makes them feel the love and dedication that they have for the series coming from the people creating it. Again, think about Into the Spider-Verse and just how much love that that series gets from the fans and from the people who are behind it. Disney, just give your fans what they want and stop blaming them for your mistakes. Anyway, The Acolyte was pretty cheeks, probably not going to watch it again, and the future of Star Wars isn't looking too bright, but I will continue to watch it and support it because I love the universe, because I'm a sucker.